Okay, continuing our discussion of iterations implemented using the while loop. We're going to go over some examples. We're going to, I'm going to use the same examples that I used when I introduced the for loop. So let's get started. And I'm going to um, illustrate the use of the for loop and the while loop side by side. Now, something interesting to note with the for loop, if you recall, we had two styles. We had the direct access as well as the indexing. Well, the way the while loop works, I mean, the for loop allows you uh, direct access, which is an interesting feature of the for loop. The while loop does not. So with the while loop, what we're going to be using specifically um, is the indexing method. So we'll be using um, um, the indexing method, the same principles behind the indexing method that we use with the for loop with the while loop. So let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, the first example, if you recall, was just to uh, display uh, the items in a vector. And so on the for loop side, if you recall, if we had some vector A, and it equaled just a set of numbers, 23, 42, 16, 8, and 12. And we would do 4x equals 1 colon length of a. This is the indexing method once again. And simply we would display a indexed at x. Okay, And then we would end that. So this is a script um, to show uh, how we do in the for, for, with the for loop. Now, contrastingly, we're going to do it over here with the while loop and I'm going to point out the changes uh, I'm going to point out the changes over here uh, so we do the a equals 23 42 16 8 and 12 mm, just for correctness I'll put the semicolons there it doesn't matter here x equals now this is where it changes I'm going to identify my x remember our, remember our, our three things. We have to initialize, we have to um, inspect, and we have to increment. Okay, initialize, inspect, and increment. And that's what we have to do over here on the while loop side. This is the while loop side. Okay, so this. Uh, this represents the initialization. So this is the initializing of the loop variable x. So our loop variable is x here, uh, sort of like x over here. So we're going to use this x in the while just like we use this x in the for. It's just the for loop does the initializing, the inspecting, and the incrementing for us. Over here we have to do it ourselves. So x equals 1, that's the initializing stage. Next up we're going to start the while loop while and then this part of the while loop is actually the inspection while x is less than or equal to the length of a so this is we're inspecting our loop variable x to make sure if it has reached our terminating condition yet uh, and telling us when to stop. So that's the inspection inspection phase. And then we're going to do some code block here. But the key is is that within the code block that we do inside the while loop, we have to increment. We have to do our incrementing part. And so uh, the incrementing here is x equals x plus 1, which adds 1 to the value of x each time we go through the loop. Then we end the loop. So this is the incrementing part. Okay, So we initialize x equal to 1. We inspect x at the top of our while loop here. We expect x to see if it has reached our terminating condition. And we see if we should continue with the loop or not. And then we increment x every time so we're getting closer to our terminating condition. Because if we don't get closer to our terminating condition, 
this loop will never stop. Again, we increment x here to 1. We test x here to see if this logical statement is true or false. This is a logical statement just like all the just like the ones we used in the if statement. Uh, so we check this logical statement. If this logical statement is true, then we execute this code block. If this, when this logical statement becomes false, when it becomes false, we no longer execute the while loop. Okay. Um, so there's a lot going on here, and there's a lot at play here. Uh, once again, let me let me go ahead and do sort of a diagram, uh, sort of bring this one home. So if I did this in a diagram, if I have enough space here, uh, this is our defining a. Uh, 23, 42, 16, 8, and 12. The next block, if you recall what I did before, is the initializing block, which is x equals 1. All right? So that initializes our loop variable. Then you get down here into the actual uh, while loop conditionals. So this is while, and then we have our logical expression that we're going to evaluate every time through the while loop, and this is our logical expression here is x is less than or equal to the length of a, which is going to be a common form that we use. If that is true, if x is, while x is still less than or equal to the length of a, um, then we execute our code block here, which in this case is just the display of a sub x. And you also have to make sure, it's almost like this code block has a necessary part, which is the actual incrementing of the loop variable so that we can get closer and closer and eventually reach our terminating condition which is x being greater than the length of a. And so if we keep adding one eventually x will be greater than the length of a. And we continue to do this loop until this logical statement x is less than or equal to a and the length of a is false. And when that becomes false we exit out of the loop and continue on. Okay, so this is a flowchart diagram of what's actually going on here. Um, now, if you will, I guess up here in the right-hand corner, let's sort of track the variables and see what's happening here. Um, so we set A equal to 23, 42, 16, 8, and 12. Um, X equals 1. So we come out first, X equals 1. While X is less than or equal to the length of A. Well, the length of A is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. So let's put 5 there. So the length of A is 5. So is 1 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So you execute this code block here, which in this code block we display A of X. A of X, X is still, X is 1 now. Um, A of X is 23. So 23, if we were going to look in, a, um, in the command window, we would get 23 displayed. Then we come back up to the top of the while loop. We, we loop back up. It is a conditional, much like before. Um, and then, oops, excuse me, but, sorry, missed the critical part here. Um, after we display 23, we then increment. So this is x now gets. And so instead of equals, if you think about it once again, as the gets or the assignment, x gets assigned the old value of x, which is 1 plus 1, which now x equals 2. So when we get back up to the top of the loop, x is now equal to 2. Okay. Um, now we check that to see, is x less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So we still execute, like down here in our flowchart, we will execute uh, this block of code. So we display a indexed at 2, which is 42. So that gets displayed. And then you come down here, and we go to our incrementing again. Is... Uh, we get x gets the present value of x or plus one, which is now the present value of x is now two, so x plus one two plus one is three, so x is now three. Go back to the top, we check to make sure we haven't reached our terminating condition yet. And so now uh th is three less than or equal to five. Yes it is, so we still execute this in this code block here. We display a indexed at x, x is now 3, so a indexed at 3 is now 16. Now x gets the present value of x, which is 3, plus 1, so now the new value of x is 4. We go back up to the top of the loop. Is x uh, less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So we continue, we execute this code block again. We display a indexed at x, which x is now 4, so a indexed at x is 8. So 8 gets displayed in the command window. Um, then we come up here 
uh, and we increment again. So the present value of x is 4 plus 1 is 5, so now x equals 5. Is 5 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So you once again execute this in this code block inside the while statement. You display a index at x. X is, whoops, x is now 5. So now a indexed at 5 is 12. And so you come down here to your incrementing. Now five, Now you go x equals the present value of x, which is 5, plus 1. So now x equals 6. You come back up here. Is x less than or equal? Is let x less than or equal to 5? Is 6 less than or equal to 5? No, it's not. This is false. So you exit out of your loop, and then you're done, which, indicate, which is indicated in the flowchart by doing this here. And if there were other lines of code down here, you would begin to execute those. So that's a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the while statement. Um, because we're using um, a loop variable here, um, then we were forced to sort of use the indexing method. As you can see here, we're using the indexing method. So compare it over here to the for loop. Uh, if you look, you know the for loop in this one step here does the initializing. X is in, it starts off at one, as one. It does the incrementing every time you come through the for loop. X is automatically moves down this vector, and it does the terminating part or the inspecting part because once it keeps checking to see if X is equal to every value in this vector. When it has, it ends. Once again, over here in the uh, while loop, you have to uh, you have to do all these steps yourself. So you have. You have to go through and increment here. Um, you have to inspect here. And excuse me, that's wrong. You have to initialize here. You have to increment here. Gosh, you have to initialize here. You have to inspect here, and you have to um, increment down there. So initialize, inspect, and increment. Initialize, inspect, and increment. So um, that is how a while loop works. Uh, so let's look at uh, three other examples. And we will continue to try to work with this concept until it becomes um, becomes very lucid to you. So this is the MATLAB portion of the examples that I gave introducing the while loop. Uh, what I have up here is I'm showing the for loop implementation of the first example, which we're just doing the counting or displaying through uh, elements of the vector. Um, once again, this is the indexing method over here for the for loop because it corresponds with the while loop and what we have to do with the indexing. So, um, showing the similarities and differences, we're going to do this clean slate thing again because it makes things a lot neater. Clear all, clears all variables, CLC clears the command window. Um, and so we'll, we'll call this uh, counting while loop. Um, so the first part is exactly the same. I can copy paste, but I, I like to type it. Once again, this is a good time to uh, turn the video off and try to implement it yourself, and then turn it back on and see what uh, how you compare to what I did. Um, so there's a. Now, once again, we've got to do our incrementing. We've got to do our in initializing. We've got to do our inspection. We've got to do our incrementing. So the initialization of our loop variable x is x equals 1. Then we put our while loop in there and then we say while x is less than or equal to uh, the length of vector a. Okay? And then um, we're going to do the work part of our of our loop code block. So we'll display a of x and then now we'll do um, and I'll put this extra line there to separate the two. We'll do the incrementing part, which is there, right, and then we'll do the end of our while loop. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's save that. Now um, I'm going to come in here, put in breakpoints again. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm going to come in here, put in breakpoints again, so that we can see over here in the workspace what's going on. Let me tighten this up a bit uh, so I can zoom in better. Bring this up. Okay. Um, so we're going to run through this. Let's see. Start execution. 
a of x, so our variable a gets assigned over here, x equals 1, that's the initializing. Uh, we checked here, while x is less than length of a, it is, so we do execute line 9, uh, which line 9 says display uh, a of x, and so 99 gets displayed down here. Uh, we then go to line 11, where we increment our loop variable, so now you see x is now 2, and then now we go back up to the top of our loop at line 8, um, and we evaluate, which is true, so we should go to line 9, we do our display again, so we display a index to 2, which is 16. Uh, then we do our increment again, a now equals 3. We're back at the top of line 8. We do our check, so that we should pass the check, because 3 is less than 5. So we go to line 9, we do our display of a indexed at 3, which is 0, down here. And then we do our incrementing, so now x equals 4. Back at the top of the loop, we pass the test again, because 4 is less than 5. We display a indexed at 4, which is 89, down in our command window. And then we increment on line 11, so now x equals 5. Back at the top, we do another check. We pass because x is 5 is less than or equal to 5. We do display, uh, so we display uh, a index at 5, which is 8. And then um, we do increment again on line 11. And then we get back to the top of our loop at line 8. We do a test. And we fail that test, so we should jump out. And you see the arrow here is indicating we're skipping all of these lines. And we're jumping out of the loop. And then our program ends. Okay? So uh, that's, that's a step-by-step -step implementation of uh, this counting script that we did over here with 4 in the indexing uh, method, indexing style. We did it over here with the while.